Good morning, good morning. The roof guy came over, the uh, the metal roof guy, and it's only gonna cost like six hundred and fifty dollars for the for the roof for this. I'm like, that is ridiculously like cheap. That's one of the awesome things about tiny houses is that like things just cost so much cheaper because there's such a small space. So I've done a couple of test roof joists. They both fit perfectly, um, exactly how I want them to. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going about doing that. Yesterday I tried using the circular saw. Wasn't a big fan of it. Last night we got a jigsaw and it works so much better uh, for the cuts that we're wanting to make and they're so much more precise. Let me show ya. So this is what I showed you yesterday, is I made these little uh, templates or jigs or whatever you want to call them so that I can draw the cut lines directly on, uh, on the joist there. And then all I'm doing is I'm just going around with the, uh, with the jigsaw and just cutting right on the line and it's definitely a lot easier than using the circular saw. It's going to be a lot more precise. It's just going to be a whole lot easier using a jigsaw. So this is my low end piece. So I, all I do is I just stick it up against the joist, make sure it's nice and tight, draw the lines all the way around. This looks like a really awkward way of doing it, and it is, but I'm just trying to get a good camera angle. Now the blade on this one's a little bit short. It's six teeth per inch. This one here though, much longer, but it's only 10 teeth per inch. And to cut the entire thing with this one, it just was taken way too long. So I do the first cut with the, with the six TPI and then just finish it off with the 10 TPI. So I label these, one's low end, one's the high end. So for the high end, just do the exact same thing. So just what I noticed on this cut here is actually using uh, the six tooth one. Since the blade isn't long enough, the cut itself wasn't perfectly up and down. It was kind of like off to the side a bit. So if I use this longer one, the cut will take a little bit longer because it's only 10 teeth per inch. Um, but the actual cut itself is much more like straight up and down, whereas this one got a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna stick with a longer blade. I've got all these beautiful joists cut to perfection. So I'm gonna be attaching the joists to the top plate uh, using these uh, these brackets here. So there's gonna be five nails going into the, uh, into the actual roof joist. And then on the bottom, I can probably get at least four or five nails in there. So the nails that are going into the joists are these inch and a half uh, joist hanger nails. Then the nails that are going into the top plate are going to be these two inch nails. So you can see here I've already got two joists up. So I just wanted to get a bit of an idea um, about how I'm going to do it before I show you guys. So I think I've got a pretty good method. It is 11.30 though right now. So I'm going to take a lunch break and I'll show you how these guys are going to go up. Honestly, what else would I be having? More red lentil chili. Uh, really, really good. Had a lot of sriracha on top of it. All right, let's get back to working on the house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the joists up there with a couple of these hangers. Da, da, da. So once it's in place, I'm gonna get the hangers in place. Then once the hangers are in place, I'm gonna put two screws, uh, one on either side of the uh, this part here that attaches directly to the joist. So the reason why I'm doing that is because once I get these hangers um, in place where they're gonna be nailed down, is I'm gonna bring the joist back down and actually hammer in the joist nails into here and then remove the screws. And then I can put the joist back up and then hammer it in 
uh, directly to the top plate. The reason why I'm doing it like that is because when you're up there, when you're trying to hammer in these joist nails into the sides of this hanger, like it is a pain in the ass. It's such an awkward position to try to be hammering the nails into. So it's much easier to bring the joist down, hammer the nails in while the joist is on the ground. Then you're just gonna get so much better leverage. It's just like, it's a much easier way of doing it. So let me show ya. So I'm gonna take my joist hanger, get it into place here. So that's where it's gonna be nailed on right there. Take a couple of screws. Over to the other side here. Same thing again, just put the joist hanger up, get a couple of screws in it. All right, now we can bring the joist down here. So now what I can do is I can uh, nail in the joist here. So this is way easier to nail this down right here as opposed to trying to nail this in uh, while you're up there. Now the other side. So I've got the joist in a place. I'm just gonna take some of these two inch nails and just uh, drive her home, baby. That one's done there. Now I have 16 more to go. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not blindly just putting those up. I actually went along and measured the 16 on center all the way down uh, before I started putting them up. And I'm just not putting them up, you know, wherever, right? All the roof joists are done. I thought it would take me at least two days uh, to get everything done, to get all the, the bird mouth things cut, but I got it all done in one day. If you saw in the time lapse there, I did kind of change my method. I just got all the, um, instead of like taking the piece up and then getting the joist hanger on there and then screwing it, then bringing it down and nailing it, I just nailed it down on here and everything worked out uh, pretty cool. So I'm either gonna take uh, tomorrow off or the following day, I'm not entirely sure. I do wanna spend Saturday with Hannah because she's leaving for New York. She'll be away for about a week or so. Other than that, very happy with the progress today and I will catch you guys on the next vlog. Talk to you soon, peace.